The foundations of our partnership are huge mutual respect and the simple law of the jungle in the office is effectively, unless we're both happy, we won't proceed. Gary talks about the Venn diagram, that there's two people, and the bit in the middle, that's Stephen's Lawson, the overlap. I know you get sick of me saying that, but it's, I think it's a good analogy. It's, it's a good analogy. Yeah. I had quite an interesting childhood. My mother was a documentary maker, and my parents were both very interested in architecture. And because I was very interested in architecture, we would spend a lot of time looking at architecture from quite a young age. After about three years of architecture school, I really felt that I really wanted to get out in the world and, and see the real thing. So I took off on a two-year odyssey that really opened up my eyes to what architecture could be. So it was, you know, an enlightened and enlightening period for me. From there on, I got a job and then I worked for a while and then I started my own practice. Nick, when he started practice, was slightly on the fringe. He wasn't kind of one of those followers of fashion. He was projecting himself into the world in a very creative way. Cycling for me was my first love and I took that quite far. I won a couple of New Zealand road cycling titles and rode overseas representing New Zealand. And I also loved playing the drums in bands and I still love playing the drums today. A big part of my life is music. Out training one Sunday morning, I had a bad accident and I ended up smashing my leg and knee and hip quite badly. The fallback at that point was to apply for architecture school. So I was working as a young graduate architect. I was having a really good time, but I wanted to sort of extend my career into more working drawings and, and the like. I heard that Nicholas Stevens was looking around for a potential employee. And so out of emboldened youth, I sent in my CV. We talked very easily, very freely about architecture, the world. And I thought, well, this guy's passionate. He's excited about architecture. We're on the sort of same wavelength. And um, I just thought I would enjoy having him around. Me being me, I just got into the office and stuck my nose into everything and had loud opinions on everything. <laughs> when you work by yourself, you can go down a few blind alleys. And there's something about externalizing the process which is really, really productive and can get you to a really good place. After about a year and a half, you know, we'd had a lot of conversations about doing public architecture, getting public commissions and increasing the scale of what we were doing. And that's something you really need a sort of a partner in crime for this kind of stuff. Oh, I remember it well. I, so we, we went to have lunch one day and Nick seemed a bit sort of more kind of like on edge than normal. And I was like, oh, this is strange. Am I about to get fired or something? Mm. And he was like, I've been given a lot of thought and um, I think we should, you know, start a new business and, and go into partnership and we should call it Stevens Lawson Architects. It was all thought out and I was just like, are you kidding me? Really? Well, yeah, let's do it. When Gary joined Nick, it was a partnership that was greater than the sum of the parts. They egg each other on. They work incredibly well together. I'm not sure what happens behind the scenes, but they have this ability to actually bounce off each other and produce this extraordinary body of work. There's a term called genius loci, which loosely translates as spirit of place. And this is something that is really what we're trying to achieve in all of our projects, to somehow find that unique spirit that this building belongs in this place for these people. Their residential work is beautiful. Their residential work is rooted in a response to the context that they find themselves in, the section, the views, the sun, and rooted in the idea of expanding a client, giving them something a little bit more than bricks and mortar. It's a very emotional experience. We've really enjoyed designing bespoke houses. We get to practice our craft at a very, very high level, but ultimately it is for the benefit of the few. 
and we're really very interested in how architecture can benefit the many. Very early on in our partnership, we entered a competition for the Remarkable Centre, which was this incredible brief for this site right in the centre of Queenstown for like every cultural facility a town could ever have. It had an auditorium, art gallery, playhouse, a conference centre on one side, the library. We decided this, that this was something we really wanted and we really went all out. And to our immense surprise, we actually did win the competition. It was an extraordinary project to get very, very young in our careers. And by the time it was all ready to go, the uh, world financial crisis hit and basically all funding streams just dried up overnight. It's like a kick in the guts when a building like that gets away. It's, you try and stay positive and go, oh, it might happen, but actually it hurts. It really hurts. Any architect that's poured their heart and soul into a design to see it kind of slip away, that's, that's a tough part of our careers, you know, and, and I think most architects understand that. There was probably a watershed moment when they won the competition for the Remarkable Centre in Queenstown. I think what this did is demonstrate a real ability to actually move up in scale and tackle a more complex brief in a civic context. We like to design buildings that look beautiful as objects, but we're probably more interested in how the buildings are actually experienced. And we think very much of the sequence of spaces as you move through them. We sometimes liken it to cinematography. How would this be experienced similar to a movie? I think one of the things that distinguishes Nick and Gary is their sculptural response. The architecture that they present is more often than not a very unique sculpture. With the Chapel of St Peter, the task there was to understand deeply what goes on in that building and 2,000 odd years of Catholic history. For me that was quite a personal journey, being Catholic and, and then engaging with my faith in a really deep way. And then I was able to bring that to the table for Nick and I to then question and think and design around that understanding. One thing that makes me incredibly proud is that my two boys go to St Peter's College now. They didn't when we designed the building and they go there and worship in the chapel that their father designed. And that's really humbling, it's, it's wonderful. The Home Ground Architectural Competition was really quite a visionary one. The City Mission had never housed people before, so they were embarking on something quite new. We really took on this idea that everybody deserved dignity, that all people deserved a, a warm, welcoming, uplifting place to live. It was quite an ambitious expression of humanism in architecture. So for me, home ground is all about finding your way back home. The idea of the building signaling that it's home, you know, from the simple roof line and the form of the building, it's communicating home. It is a home for people, first and foremost. And that is a remarkable thing to offer people who have been literally living on the streets. We first met Graham Tepany at the City Mission, and Graham came and talked to a small group of us about making design relevant to Māori. And this is my initial first meeting them that I call more architects. A lot of the work we get asked to do is the tokenistic stuff. That totally changed with um, Stevens Lawson, totally changed. And it was more of a us opportunity to think and to do what's right. Not for the building, but for the people and the experience of the people coming to the building. He's taken time to get to know us and, and to work with us on changing the way we do things and the way we think about things to take on a Māori worldview. And we're employing that across many projects in the office. Collectively, we are growing in our confidence in the collaboration, which is the intent of the treaty. Their approach to Māori design thinking is a exemplar for future projects having their own way of working 
and seeing value in another way of thinking to aid in the project. An important part of the experience of the building is the laneway on the ground floor. And this laneway is an urban space and it links two city streets, Hobson Street and Federal Street. Everybody can enter this space. So it's, it's a real opening up of the city mission and it's a real engagement with the life of the city. You're literally rubbing shoulders with people from all walks of life and all backgrounds. And in that moment, we are all truly part of the same community. And I think that's it's a really powerful gesture that the building has offered the mission. What the building is saying to people is, you're welcome, everyone is welcome. This building is something really quite special. I think that certainly deeply the architecture has made that possible. And the fastidiousness to excellence is just implicit in every stage. You certainly you feel it in the building. They wanted and sought architecture for justice as their contribution in the service of humanity. There were hundreds of moments where I knew it would be easier for them to walk away and or easier for them to do a job that was less or mediocre. Uh, Gary, Nick, to you and your team on behalf of the Auckland City Mission, thank you. Um, thank you for the generosity and the courage of your spirit. Because of your generosity and courage, thousands and thousands of people have lives that will be better. And uh, without you, we couldn't have done it. It's beyond architecture. You know, for me personally, I'm, I'm a better person through the work we've done with the mission. It's taught me so much about compassion, um, dignity. It's probably the most important work we will do in our careers. It's one of the most important things that we have done and I have done in my life. The people we have met, the love, the manaki tanga, the learning that we've had through this process has been life changing. It's changed our lives and we know that it will change so many people's lives. So, you know, what more can you want from architecture? <laughs>